See that stack of chips? That's cold, hard cash that we're using to commit a robbery. We're on the button and we've got the goods. Wait, what? Well, maybe not the goods, but we've got a blocker to those good hands and we have something else going for us. Tiger mentality. Our opponent decides to call and we're going to a flop. You know, if you're like me and you enjoy stealing pots from opponents who are opening too many hands pre-flop, with less than premium holdings, go ahead and hit the like and subscribe button down at the bottom of this screen. That tells YouTube to get this video out to other people like you and me who enjoy a little bit of larceny. It's a lot of fun. Highly suggest it. And your opponents, I mean, they're not really gonna miss those chips that bad. You're probably wondering how we got here. Let me explain. Our opponent is currently playing his fifth hand in a row, and while it's possible that he's made a good hand five times in a row, it's very unlikely. He's been at the table for two orbits, and has been playing a lot of hands. His open is to $25, there are two callers in between, so there's $75 sitting on the table. I make a raise to $120, expecting it to be good, and this to be the end of the hand the majority of the time. He does make the call, however, which is not exactly what we want to see, and we're going to a flop. Deuce 3-5 might not look like a good flop, but it's actually fantastic for us. We would be betting this with our over cards and our pairs. It's going to put our opponent in a tough spot. And so we're going to lead out for $90 on this flop with a gut shot and two overs. The beauty of this flop is that it allows us to bet a lot of cards in the turn. We can bet a heart, we can bet a four, and we can bet over cards like Broadway cards when they hit. Our plan is to bet really big and put max pressure on the turn. Well, crap. We may have had a great plan, but it all falls apart when our opponent leads into us for $250 on the Queen of Diamonds. Thank goodness he takes this line, though, because if he checks to us, it'll be a disaster. I'm betting big. He has Ace, Queen of Hearts, and tables it for us when we muck. Well, the bad news is, I throw away a couple hundred bucks. The good news? I saved a lot of money in this hand. Sure, it was a crappy outcome, but I actually like the play. If your opponent's betting five hands in a row, chances are they don't have things as strong as ace-queen, and this opponent was showing down much weaker hands than the previous hands, so sometimes you just run into it, and that's part of the game. Sometimes I have to ask myself if I'm doing a little too much to drive home the point in these videos. In this hand, we don't have to bluff, because we have pocket tens. Things are looking a little bit better this time. We're in the cutoff, there's a limp in the hijack, and I make it $18 to go. He calls, and we're going heads up to a flop. The flop comes down four, deuce, five with two spades. This is a pretty good flop for us. I'm gonna bet small. I'm going for $15, and my goal is to target flush draws, over cards, and a potential hand like an ace five that has a, a gut shot plus a pair. So I make the bet of 15, and he does call. We go to the turn, and the turn is the six of clubs. It changes the board a little bit, but the only things that are, have really improved are five, six, potentially a set of sixes. If he had something like ace three, obviously he has the straight, but he would have had it already on the flop. And so I'm gonna bet small again. I bet 25, our opponent does call, and we're off to the river. The river comes down the seven of clubs, and this is not a good card for us. So a lot of those combinations that we were able to get value from are now beating us. Even the ones that were drawing for a flush may have stumbled into a straight. Uh, so we, this is just not, when he checks to us, it's just not a spot where I'm going to attempt to go for really, really thin value because I think it's going to be hard to get called by much worse. I go ahead and check back, and we do end up scooping this pot. He shows Queen Jack offsuit, and we're the winner. A much better result than the first hand. In this next hand, we have Ace King offsuit. We're in the small blind. There's a raise from middle position to $12. The cutoff calls, and I three bet it up to $50. I get one caller. We go heads up and we see ace-jack-3 rainbow. At this point, I'm gonna set the trap. My opponent only has $140 left in his stack, and when he checks to me and I bet $35, my goal is to get him pot committed by the turn. What's interesting is that the trap that I set goes off immediately. Much better than I had planned, and here we go, we are set up. I'm gonna make the call. He shows us king-queen offsuit, so he is drawing to a 10. The board, however, runs out clean for us, and we are scooping a nice pot once again. Jack of spades, ten of spades for this one. We are in middle position, we raise to 15 with 600 in our stack, and we get a call from the hijack. The flop comes 10, 9, 5 with two spades, and we're feeling good about betting $15 with top pair and a flush draw. Our opponent calls, and we're going to go to the turn. The turn comes down the five of hearts. 
Doesn't really change the board too much. This is actually a pretty good card for us. We wouldn't mind seeing a spade there or another 10 or a jack, but this is a, a pretty good turn if you want to ask for one. So we're going to go ahead and bet again, and I bet $40. I think I like sizing down to more like $30. I want to be targeting things like a worse 10 or a 9 for value, and so I think betting $40 with my, my hand is actually, my made hand is actually pretty medium, um, even though it's top pair. It's one of the weakest top pairs I'll show up with, and so I don't think I love my sizing. I think I'd prefer to go a little bit smaller once again. I, I did bet 40 however, and my opponent does call. We go to the river, and it's the two of clubs. And this really is a, an absolute banana. It doesn't make any difference um, and it doesn't bring anything in. So uh, at this point, I'm trying to think what my opponent should have. He's going to have a lot of uh, 10s that are better than ours. Even a 10-9 is two pair. And so the only thing we're really beating is like 10-8, which shouldn't be in here too often. So I'm going to go ahead and check. The other thing is like missed flush draws. Surprisingly enough, our opponent shows us pocket queens. So he didn't three bet his preflop and does not go for value on the river. A very surprising decision, but he ends up scooping it, not us. The last hand of the night is a goodie. We've got two tens and we are in the cutoff. A player raises in front to $12 and there's a three bet to $50 from the hijack. I end up making the call with pocket tens after debating a, an additional raise. I decide I'm just going to flat this one and uh, see what develops. There's not a lot of three betting in this game, so his range is going to be pretty strong, I suspect. We go four ways to a flop, surprisingly, but the flop does come down extremely nice for us. It comes down 10, jack, six with two diamonds. Now the small blind leads for $200. So there's 200 in the pot. They make a pot size bet with a total of 400. It ends up folding around to us. And I think about this one for quite a while. I'm trying to figure out what the value targets are versus some of the bluffs. I don't really want to blow my opponent off of their hand when I have such a good one. So I debate just flat calling and allowing them to remain aggressive. However, if they're holding something like a jack, I don't want a scare card to come and for them to get away. Also, if they have a flush, I, I want them to be drawing for it and not just to have it right away. So I decide to jam all in with the set and my opponent does end up making the call. They show ace jack and uh, we end up holding on the run out. So everything is clean, we are good and we end up scooping a nice pot on this one. This is the biggest pot of the night that I win. It's nice to be pulling in a bunch of chips and uh, definitely had some run good there at the end to finish this one off on a, on a very positive note. We were into this game for 900, out for 11.90, so a profit of $290. All right guys, thanks for watching this one. Give this one a click and give it a watch. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe. Don't tell anyone.